Welcome back to another battery charger review. I have the latest i8 charger in from Nightcore. And this was sent in via Gearbest for review. And this is a review. We'll go through good and bad areas of the charger. I put on the screen there some of the size measurements for you and take a tour with the power input. Figure of eight, there's a 12 volt adapter and two USB output charging ports. And looking at the design of this, it's completely different to most chargers. There are eight bay chargers around but this one has a completely different design. It's rather than all laid out flat, it has the vertical stacking and you have a total of eight bays, which is gonna be useful if you use a lot of batteries. And on the underside with the silicone pads and you'll see the safety certifications and the battery types listed out. There is a difference between that and the side of the box here, which mine got slightly squashed, um, you won't see all of the batteries listed out on the box. Nightcore probably need to update that because it differs slightly from the printed on the underside. Looking at the back gives you some of the features. This is completely automatic, this charger, so there isn't really any adjustments that you can make other than loading more cells into the charger. So we need to have a charger that is both safe and it's also going to charge batteries correctly. There is a verification code on the top. You can scratch off if you have any doubts about the authenticity of it. And it is worth looking at the user manual, even though it's automatic, there are some interesting points here. First of all, the charge rate, which does vary, and we'll get into that shortly, but it also gives you some of the features. There's an active current distribution, so it will redistribute the current if it's finished charging on some slots. So that will improve charging speeds at the later stages. And it's got battery activation as well as overtime protection as well. As expected, reverse polarity, short circuit, protection and just some safety tips there. I have the Euro version plug and you also get a warranty card that has included too. Now a quick comparison next to the D4, very popular charger. This does accept the 2700 cells. The slots are 72 millimeters long. You can see obviously it has quite a bit more thickness compared to the D4, although it's not particularly tall. When you plug the charger in, you'll just see a very quick flash with the red LEDs come up, all of them flash there. They don't stay on when nothing's in the slot and you'll see that we have raised contact points on both sides. Now the cells that are under 60 millimeter in length will always be charged at half an amp. Uh, that includes AA, the 14500, the rechargeable CR123As and cells of that type. Obviously you don't want to charge them at a super high rate quick shot of the contact, raised contact points on the sliders. And it's able to detect the cell length um, by the contact points that are on the sliders themselves. So they'll engage and disengage depending on the length of the cell. So for example, if I put a 26650 into the charger, it's gonna know that's a big cell and it will charge at a faster rate. With this charger, you can mix and match however you wish. You can put lithiums, the 3.7 volt lithiums that is, there's no support for the other lithium cells, AAs, nickel metal hydride, nickel cadmium as well. I've got smaller lithium cells as well. So it's pretty much a fire and forget solution for people. The charging speeds I put on the screen there, they do vary depending on the number of slots that you're using. So if you want a quick charge, just use two of the slots and it recommends in the manual that you use one side first before you load up the other side to increase the charging speed. You'll see the red LEDs, they're quite visible even from the side. Another advantage with this, just like the SC4 charger which I looked at recently, is that due to the wider slots on the outside and the overall dimensions, you can fit three large cells of three 26 650s loaded in here and there's enough space to fit a 18650 or another type of battery in there. So you can fit a total of six big cells in this charger and that could be useful, although your charging rate is gonna drop. For very small cells, can be a little bit fiddly, triple A's with the raised contact points. You might need to jiggle them around a little bit and uh, make sure that they hit the contact points properly. A slight trade-off, they have the contact points there so that you can um, use the flat top cells and it will contact them properly. Here I'm just loading up with various types of batteries. Now the only indication you've got that it's charging is just the red light comes on. That's it. It's about as simple as you can get for a charger. And once it's finished, 
they turn to green. That's that's what you get. There's no sort of, I know it's 50% charge. There's no multi-levels on that. Now looking at the ventilation slots, this has quite a few around the base and on the underside, on the edges there. So we're going to test some temperatures in a while just to see what's happening with the charger, make sure it's charging okay and not overheating. Now I tested quite a few cells in this and I was charging uh, for about an hour and I was getting around about 23 to 27 degrees Celsius on the cells. The vents were a bit hotter, about 35 to 39. The base is the area that has the most heat just under the 50 degrees max. So it's not overheating, it's not pushing the heat into the cells, which is a good sign. And uh, at the bottom vent there, just one side gets a little bit hotter than the other. It also holds the batteries very securely. You can see me shaking it here and they're not coming out. Once it's finished, you'll see the green LED come on. They're not as bright as the red ones, although they're all diffused, so they're not too annoying if you're quite close to the charger. You can see a front shot here showing you the LED differences I don't find the lights annoying myself anyway. It is a very slight ticking sound though, I have to admit, when it's charging. Testing terminations. Getting good termination for both lithium and nickel metal hydride cells. Getting around about uh, 4.18 for the lithium cells. And up to around 1.47, 1.49 for the nickel metal hydrides. One downside is for C cells that you're going to get a slightly lower charging speed, half an amp. Back to the lithium, we're up to 4.19, and I've got an LG hydrain cell, 4.19. This cell came out slightly lower at 4.16, but overall I'm pretty happy with the charging, and I've finished charging the C cell, about 1.47. I'm not seeing any charging problems with this, so I decided to test the USB charging ports. You can get over 2 amps out of a single port, but once you load up with uh, the second port if you're charging that at a very high rate it will shut one of the ports down so you're about 1.5 amps per port max if you're using both of them just bear that in mind if you have fast charge devices i was charging a couple of usb type c devices very fast charge speeds on those did a quick test i've pre-charged these batteries already to see how quickly it would detect that they are already charged and it was about three minutes for the 18650 and seven minutes for the 26650 so a bit slower for the larger cell but it did detect that they were already pre-charged reasonably quickly if you insert a battery in the wrong way around you'll just get the red led flashing to let you know it won't attempt to charge it and it won't put any current into it so a very safe charger to use Time to come to some conclusions with the new i8 IntelliCharger. Overall, I think they've done a pretty good job on this one. There are a couple of areas I would have looked at, though. Firstly, there's only a single indicator for the LED, so you never really know how far a battery is charged. Um, so I'd advise keeping an eye on your batteries, as in keep them somewhere where you're going to charge them and you know that they're flat or get a battery tester. That would make things possibly a bit easier. Sometimes I've pulled cells out of LCD chargers that I've known have been three quarters charged and I needed to use them. So bear that in mind. That is a limitation. I expect if they added more LEDs or an LCD panel, that probably would have put the cost up. But that's something that I wouldn't mind seeing in a future model. The other point that I would look at is the 9 volt cells. I have a few of them. Uh, maybe they're not particularly common for everyone, but I would have liked to have had at least one place that I could charge them on the charger. It would have made it a complete all-in-one solution almost. There are some limitations as well. A, A and C cells are limited to half an amp, although you can charge uh, a large quantity of those cells if you wish. So that perhaps negates that. And there's no support for the lithium ion phosphate cells or the 4.35 volt lithium. That's not a particular down. They're not really that common. On to the good stuff. A pretty good all-in-one solution. Decent termination on this. It can take a lot of batteries and quite a few, up to six of the big cells too. And you also have the USB ports, which are pretty good unless you try and charge both at two amps. And it's a good improvement over the i4, the new version. That could only charge one cell at 1.5 amps or four at 375 milliamps. So if you found yourself using that and needing more, more bays to charge and a higher charging rate, this would be a pretty good bet. The SC4, I also did a review on that, and that offers a detailed display, battery test, and more information on the charging as well as faster charging up to three amps. So weigh up the pros and cons on this. If you want a simple 
easy to use charger, this one's probably worth looking at.